Hello and welcome back and today I want to answer a question that you guys have been putting in the comments for the better part of two years. Will my NAS run DSM-7? Now DSM-7 is available in its RC version, a number of people are very realistically looking at whether their current network attached storage device from Synology will run DSM-7. Now, today's video is the first part of many videos that we're doing over the next few days or in about a week where I'm going to be looking at a series of current generation Synology NASes in different architectures and with each video I'm going to be bench testing DSM-7. Today's video I'm going to be looking at the Synology DS220J. You can tell the box is empty, I've already set the device up over there and me, this mic and this laptop are going to be going through DSM-7, the RC release candidate which is pretty much you know going silver, it's the main one just before we see the full release and now is a very good time to find out if this software is going to run. We we were thinking about doing it before but I wanted to make sure we had at least the final or as close as possible before we did this. Now how did I select the NASs that we're using in these videos? Firstly I went for all of this current generation because these are the ones that are most you know commonly purchased right now. There's people with older versions and maybe they're slightly out of warranty or whatever but all these versions released in the last 18 months all of these versions, all of these NASs, should really run DSM-7 in one shape or form. Some of them are below spec, it has to be said. But what we're looking at is the DS120J, the DS220J, the DS920+, Plus, the DSR, um, uh, DS1621+, Plus, and we may fit some other NASs on the end there as well, like such as the DS220 Plus. But for now, the reason I'm going for this budget candidate is because this system is one that a lot of people bought as an affordable entry point into Synology, and now they're wondering if they can run DSM-7. So how do we gauge how well DSM-7 is gonna run? Because a lot of us use our systems differently. Well, I'm gonna be looking at it in the following ways. Every NAS that I test in all the videos this week have to conform to the following. We're going to be testing the graphical user interface and how responsive it is. We're going to be looking at um, navigating the control panel and file management. We're then gonna look at Synology photos. We're then gonna be looking at audio station. We're gonna be looking at video station. And then we're gonna look at surveillance. Those are the key ways in which we're going to measure DSM-7's uh, performance on all of these NASs. Now, it's worth highlighting a few things. One, if you do install DSM-7 on a NAS, it is nigh, nigh on impossible without really getting all tinkery to try to revert it back to 6.2. Second thing, it does replace Synology Moments and Photo Station. So if you install DSM-7, you'll switch straight over to Synology Photos. And the third one, and this is probably the most important, and the other reason we're starting with this NAS is it has a, it has a recommended one gig minimum memory. And although we are going to be testing on a sub one gig memory uh, NAS in the future video on the DS120J, it's worth highlighting that one gig of memory is quite, you know, that slices off a lot of the affordable disk stations, you know, sub DS218 Play, I believe. So although lots of systems are on the compatibility list, including ones like the DS115J, which is less like a quarter of a gig of memory, and it has its version of DSM-7, so long as you make it abundantly clear that DSM-7 runs at its best with one gig of memory, so we have to bear that in mind. But I've been rabbiting you for long enough, I promise the intros are going to be way, way, way shorter on the other videos. I just wanted to get the full intro out there. Let's make our way into the DS220J with DSM-7 and see how well it performs. Right, so here we are on the desktop. We're looking at the DS220J. I've installed DSM-7, as you can see here on screen. We're accessing the device over the local area network, over 192. And as you can see, we've downloaded DSM-7. So there's DSM-6.2 there on the 220. And again, you click down and boom, there's your DSM-7 right there. Also, as mentioned, they do highlight in here that although it is applied on a number of different devices, again, some of these are genuinely staggering that they support DSM-7, I've got to say, but they, again, the, the system does seem to be available on a number of devices. Once again, as mentioned, the one gig of memory, they do highlight that it may affect system performance. So let's go straight in. Let's log into the NAS and have a little look about what we can do with this device. Obviously, I've done all of the indexing, so I've already spent a little bit of time with this system. 
um, getting it set up for this video. You can see the login there was lovely and sharp. Um, so there's our user interface. We can sort of move stuff around. It seems relatively um, well placed there. If we go into the control panel, you can see a nice snappy response there. Um, if we go into the hardware resources area, we can have a little look about what we have here. We want to go to the information center. And as you can see, this is the DS220J running DSM-7. Uh, 41882. I've already set it up with that disposable Gmail account. There's a Realtek CPU. There's the memory, half a gig of memory. So again, we are using a system that's running less than one would expect, but it seemingly is being quite responsive. We can go to the shared folders. We've created a few there. But again, what I think will happen is how many things we can multitask on this system while we go through it. So there's all our options there. We've already set it up. It's a standard 1GBE network. If we go into file station there, do try to keep an eye down here on the resource monitor there because you can immediately see this has not dipped below about 50% already. We're not even running that many tasks. In fact, while we're at it, let's run that resource monitor there in the background at all times. Let's minimize it a little bit. But let's have that resource monitor on screen as much as we can throughout this video. So we can go into the different options. I've already created a photo album there. And again, I will be going into the dedicated applications in a wee bit. Um, but even then, pretty early doors, you know, it, it seems to be doing all right. We've got all those test files that we normally run for Plex Media Server and stuff. And again, you can just go ahead, play a file. Opens up, it's just trying to download it for me there, which is no good. Um, but we will be using the video station stuff. But, you know, I can browse the albums pretty easily. It's letting me flick through them with relative ease. I think all the file station options seem to be there. Um, again, if we go into the processes, we can see a little bit more there. Um, memory and volume utilization. You can see that memory is just not dipped there. I think this is going to be an area where that memory is going to be the major throttling effect here. Um, and again, CPU utilization is fairly low while we don't run many devices. We've got Plex Media Server there, but it's sleeping. I do like the intelligent uh, kind of background hibernation of this um, system. So next, let's make our way into Photo Station because we want to see, uh, not Photo Station, tut, 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 we're talking about Synology Photos. Synology Photos, which of course opens in a new tab. I've already chucked on a load of photos on this system. Um, one early critique, I will say, is the indexing on this system was painfully slow. Um, it, you know, I, I would expect that with that small amount of memory, but just to put that into perspective, another video that's coming up shortly is going to be the video for the DS120J, which has got, um, a, you know, um, an arguably smaller amount of memory. I believe, I think this device, oh, it has the same memory at 512 megabytes, I'm thinking of an older one, but if we go for this system, and log into this one, the 120J, at the moment, because it's taking so long to do that indexing there, it is very much a slower case of affairs. So we've had to delay the DS120 video for a day or two because it's taking so much longer to do the indexing. Because unlike this system with its quad-core Realtek ARM 64-bit, this system's running a dual-core 800 megahertz uh, Marvel 32-bit and just... The resource utilization while it's indexing all of those files is just taking forever. So again, do stay tuned for that video. But going back into Synology Photos here, one of the things that impressed me quite early doors is it was still running the GIFs quite well there in the background. I assumed that um, Synology Photos would have to clip its wings in terms of features and functionality. Um, but seemingly, you know, it's displaying all that information. Do ignore the fact we've got duplicates there. When I was going back and forth with the copying, I think um, some of our photos got duped. It's not the Synology's fault. That's very much my own fault there. But if we go for a photo, there's um, Home Alone, the board game, because I'm super cool people. You know, we've got, um, we can access some of the information there, but I don't believe that is a photo that's been geo-tagged. So let's try and go for one there. Actually, better yet, we're in Synology Photos. Let's go straight into those smart albums there. So we can go into the places, find lots of information about locations as well, that it's used the geolocational data there in the background. The tags, 
We don't have the tag supported there at the moment. This could be a limitation of the system and its memory, but I've had this um, NAS up and running now for about 48 hours with a relatively small amount of data. Um, so we've not seen those tags be implemented yet. Um, if we carry on, if we want to look at one of my personal favorites, uh, photos of a friend there, yes, that's Dan, he's a child. Um, but if we scroll down, let's go for something a little older and try and go for a photo. We're gonna take uh, have a look at Ron's butt. We can go in, but again, I think maybe we're using photos here that have already had their filters played with, so it does make it a little bit tough there uh, to test the background data, but it's still seemingly running quite well, has to be said. Um, the thumbnail generation's pretty good. I like that the live photos and GIFs are all being done quite well there in the background. All of those photos running very, very well indeed. Uh, nice and easy there, but once again, I think um, we're not seeing as much information as we might like. But again, I'm going to go easy a little bit on the 220J here uh, because I think we are still using um, suboptimal amounts of memory for what DSM considers uh, fully stable. But you can still access Synology Photos. Um, if we go back into the DS220J, um, we're going to go into Audio Station. Now, of course, I apologize in advance, we can't actually play music, which is really annoying. Um, but we can have a look how it's indexed all of the files as well as we can still it's still being not lovely and responsive lots of stuff there in the background again although you're not going to be able to hear it I can go for some old video game music click play and you'll be able to tell from the playback that it is indeed playing so again plays there instantaneous and again it's over the network is what I would expect again flick between to another tune playing it Doing it all there in the back, and you've still got all the sharing options, all the stuff that you want. So again, audio files, I'm going to say that's going to run absolutely fine. Video station, a little bit more of an arguably harder task to run. Um, and we can have a little look how video station performs on this system. The majority of you are not really going to be accessing video station locally. Let's be realistic. You're going to be accessing it uh, rem um, remotely over the network, sure. But you're going to be looking at stuff on your TV. You're going to be accessing it there in the background. And it's going to be indexing. Let's go for it there. Let's add a couple of folders there. Go for responsiveness there. Let's add a, a folder. Let's find TV shows. Go into the video folder. Go into TV shows. Click select. Click OK and let it index that file. So it goes for movie. Let's repeat the same steps. Oh, wrong one. Movies. Click OK. And let it index that folder. It's going to do that in the background. It's starting to build that index in there. Lovely, straightforward stuff. So we'll come back to Video Station in a moment. We'll leave that tab open. Um, so we've done the multimedia aspects of this. And again, we've got stuff like the Storage Manager, which is still just as responsive, giving us an idea of the storage user interface there. Stuff about smart tests. We can find out more about the storage volume. And we're running a, a couple of drives there, as you can see, in uh, an SHR, a couple of Synology hard drives. Again, we can sort of go into it, go into the health info as well. Lots of the smart history stuff there in the background. Um, again, it's a Synology drive, so there are a kind of advantages there. Go to the firmware update, and if there is a firmware update from Synology, it would appear here on their drives. And it's nice that that has been implemented into this, even though these drives arguably are for a much higher tier utilization. This system doesn't have SSD caching bays, otherwise they would arrive here on screen. So next, let's make our way over to surveillance. So if we go into the surveillance application, we're going to click on surveillance station. Um, I am using OBS throughout this video, so this may impact some of the stuff we see on screen. Bear in mind that right now we are utilizing a little bit more in terms of system resources. If we open up the system resource manager, we are currently running video station doing some indexing there in the background while it's indexing those files and it will start scraping for metadata as well but now we're running surveillance station here in the background so we can have a look at the utilization the memory in its defense going by what we're seeing here on screen isn't struggling too much that Realtek CPU they've done a very good job of running um, um, their software platform on that processor I don't think they run BTRFS, maybe we should check that. Maybe I should not accidentally click the wrong banner there on screen. Um, if we go back into Surveillance Station, while it uh, flicks us around there in the background, 
going to the live view, um, we have connected a couple of cameras to this software. So there should be um, some cameras there on screen. So have a little look. Oh, it looks like we're not set up yet. So let's go ahead into the IP camera settings. Let's add our cameras. I must have set it up on the other now. So we can go ahead, start adding cameras here. So have a little look. Open up the OnViv. Let's open up that. Let's get that camera logged in. Get that camera added. And again, it's still being lovely and responsive here for us. I apologize for the background hum there. It is a busy Saturday morning in a seaside town uh, where my office is based. So unsurprisingly, uh, life is very much alive there in the background. Let's go ahead and add another camera. We'll have a little look how the system reacts to this. Let's find that other camera. I think it was the IP ending 106. Let's go for the 106 camera. Let's add that camera. Call it OnViv. Two, go ahead, put in the login. We kind of default admin a lot of this stuff here. So we can go ahead, click next. You can kind of hear the drives in the NAS in the background there. If we go back, now we can go back into the 220 there. Let's open up that resource monitor, see how the system is dealing with what we are throwing at it right now. It's still running DSM 7 quite well, I would say. If we open up the feed outside those cameras, so let's get that live view. And right now we should have one camera in the corner and that's the camera that's overlooking the two NASes there. And right now we've got myself up here and the camera there on screen um, filming me throughout the course of this. Look at the state of this shirt. Anyone got an iron? Unbelievable. But we can have a look at those two systems there on the left hand side. And if we like, we can play around with the pan tilt zoom settings there. So let's move that around and see how responsive pan tilt zoom is going to be and how uh, quickly and responsive it is to the commands that we relay to it. Let's go ahead. Doesn't seem to want to um, allow that too quickly there. Let's have a little look. Let's bring that camera up. Mm, no, pan tilt zoom settings. Not as responsive as I'd like. I think the system is probably um, orchestrating quite a lot of stuff right now. Um, and again, the usual sort of settings are going to be there, I'm sure, if we want to zoom in. Oh, there we go. We're going crazy town. So again, I think that slight delay there, whether that delay was caused by uh, my click in the system there. Mm, the jury's out on that one. Leave that to rotate a little bit there in the background. If we go back to video station there. Can have a look at the TV shows. Let's open up Taskmaster there. Again, the metadata scraping hasn't started. I think that camera has reset its position, shall we? Let's go back. Let's go into the pan tilt zoom settings. Let it rotate around. But again, it's seemingly working. I can't really fault that the cameras are recording and that frame rate via the cameras in the web browser is still pretty darn good. Um, come out of that. Um, and again, timeline management, everything seems to be quite responsive. I think we are starting to see the system get a little bit taxed there. If we go into the process, if we'll find out a little bit more information about what's doing what, I think we can largely ascertain that the surveillance and the indexing there in the background is probably taxing the system the tiniest bit. And we're seeing erratic uh, kind of memory connectivity is there. Heading back into video station there, we can have a look at the metadata scraping. Still hasn't completed and done its thing. We have already set it up there in the background. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is play the usual file that we always play. It's a 1080p version of the Matrix. We're going to see if the conversion options are there. This is still using a Realtek processor. So it should be absolutely fine in playing this file. We should be able to skip forward. While it's doing all the usual guff there, we can go into the config settings, have a little look. We don't really have much in the way of configuration options with regards to the transcoding and more. I have to say there are a few options there that were absent, but we are still using that Realtek processor and we're accessing this multimedia locally. But it is still able to give us access to that file, which is always good. And again, I think multimedia wise, we get kind of what we expect from this. So I'll come out of video station there. Let's go back into surveillance station as well. I think right now the thing that's letting DSM-7 be held back the tiniest bit on this system is arguably that memory. You can definitely see why Synology have ascertained that that one gig of memory should be the standard amount. And again, I think 
if you are thinking of getting DSM-7, I think it's going to run pretty well on this system. I would argue that the minute you multitask, or if you're looking to take advantage of anything fast, um, that, you know, if you've got a little bit of patience, I would say DSM-7 is pretty much good to go on this system. But arguably, when we're doing the responsive uh, clicks we saw with the camera earlier on, um, that the response of that pan tilt zoom wasn't as good as we like. And a lot of this comes down to the responsiveness of those commands over the network. Um, again, we are still using the DS220J, so we have to remain relative at the very least. But I am going to be covering this subject all week, and I will be filming a second barrage of these tests later on. So if there is a specific modern generation NAS that you want to see, let me know. Um, but again, we will be testing the majority of the Ryzen, Intel, and Realtek-based systems anyway so do check those out but otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope you found this video helpful do let me know if you have and of course click like if you've enjoyed the video subscribe if you want to learn more and if you want to stay tuned for the other dsm7 tests this week but otherwise i will see you next time